Ladies and gentlemen, to celebrate the official announcement of the 12-team playoff that will be starting in 2024, we're going to do a little what-if alternate history scenario here and go super in-depth on, you know, what if college football had installed the 12-team playoff in the year 1998 or, you know, since 2014 when we expanded to four teams. So we're going to look back. We're going to really digest all of this and get ready for the future by looking at, at what could have been. And I just think this is so great for the sport, guys. There are so many more positives than negatives. I keep saying that. So many more fan bases involved in the national title outlook. It needed to happen for the growth of the sport, and it is happening. But guys, uh, just a quick note, some interesting facts when it comes to looking back. So since, since 2014, the only team technically that would have made every single playoff in a 12-team format would have been Ohio State. Now, you know, you, you wonder with Alabama, they're normally always inside the top 10. If you guys remember back in 2019, that Citrus Bowl that Alabama played against Michigan, they were ranked number 13. Of course, the general consensus is if there was actually a 12-team playoff, they would have put Alabama in. But you know, putting Alabama at 13 really makes no difference between 12 and 13. When you're in a 14 playoff, it doesn't matter. If it's a 12-team playoff, they probably would have been in. But technically the only team that qualifies since 2014, a top 12 team uh, with all the qualifications would be Ohio State. So let's look back. We're going to peel it all back, starting with 2021. Uh, we know Alabama, Michigan, Cincinnati, and Baylor, because they're a conference champion, they are the top four teams. They get buys. And then we've got Georgia at number five. They would have t taken on Pittsburgh. How about Pittsburgh making it? Good for them with Jordan Addison. Uh, Notre Dame at number six taken on Utah. Ohio State would have faced Michigan State. Now, I, that's another one where... To me, they 100% would have changed that. If you guys remember last year during the regular season, the total decapitation, you know, Ohio State, Michigan State, it was 42 to nothing at the half. Uh, so I don't know if they would have stuck with that rematch. And then Ole Miss versus Oklahoma State uh, in that. So that would be 2021. Uh, moving back to 2020, this was the pandemic year, so you've got Alabama at number one. They had just a crazy great year. That was when they played nine conference games. That was the Devontae Smith-Heisman year. Clemson at number two, Ohio State number three, Oklahoma sitting at number four, and then the rest of the field, Notre Dame makes it. Texas A&M comes in at number six. Florida, they would have been matched up with Iowa State, so Iowa State would have made it. And then Cincinnati, that would have been another playoff appearance for Cincinnati as the group of five team. How about Coastal Carolina and Indiana? You want to talk about some new blood? Guys, you want to know who was the king of the pandemic? Coastal Carolina. I swear to God, I didn't even know Coastal Carolina existed until the pandemic. And like since then, they've been a really good team with Grayson McCall. I'm, I'm wondering, is Grayson McCall out of eligibility at this point? It seems like he's been there a while. They would have made it. Could you imagine Coastal Carolina at Notre Dame, Indiana at Texas A&M? I remember Indiana, you remember the game against Ohio State during the pandemic when there were, it was a big noon game and Justin Fields started off and threw like two interceptions and then Ohio State was up 35-7 to and, and Indiana tried coming back. That was just a, it, it, that whole year was crazy. Uh, but you can see there, Georgia also the nine seed in 2020. Back in 2019, we remember the crazy Joe Burrow year with LSU, with Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. They would have been the number one overall seed receiving a bye. Ohio State and Clemson, they played in that crazy game with Trevor Lawrence and Sean Wade getting ejected. They would have been the two and the three seed. Oklahoma, still with Lincoln Riley at this point. They would have been the four seed. And then the rest of the field, you have Georgia making it again. You have Oregon, Baylor, Wisconsin. They would have made several ones. They had a really good run, Wisconsin. Florida, Penn State, that's another team. Guys, the one thing I was thinking about with Penn State, you really do 
have to be uh, very optimistic if you're a Penn State fan, the way James Franklin is running that program. And, and now you've got a margin for error to where you could technically lose to both Ohio State and Michigan and still comfortably make a 12-team playoff and possibly host a playoff game. Uh, and then Utah at number 11. And Memphis gets a shout-out. As the Sea Guys were getting more teams involved, there's new blood every year. This is exactly what we should want. Going back to 2018, you've got Alabama as the number one overall seed, Clemson at number two, Oklahoma at three, Ohio State at four. That's a pretty boring top four, right? And then the rest of the field, Notre Dame, Georgia, Michigan, and then you get UCF, of course, uh, Washington, Florida, LSU. That was pretty much all the Blue Bloods. My goodness, LSU and Penn State coming in at number 12 uh, on the list there. Going back to 2017, Clemson, the number one overall seed. Oklahoma, number two. Georgia, number three. Ohio State, number four. They all get buys. Alabama at number five. Wisconsin at six. I remember that year, Wisconsin was, I believe, 12-0. and And then they lost to Ohio State. Yeah, that was the year JT, I think JT Barrett played where he could barely even walk, but Urban still played him in the Big Ten Championship game. I don't know why. Uh, and then you have Wisconsin... At numbers, Wisconsin, they would have made so many 12 team playoffs. Auburn at number seven. USC with Sam Darnold. Yes, we remember the USC. Oh no, was that not? Yeah, that was Sam Darnold. Because USC made back to back New Year's Six Bowls, if you guys remember, with Sam Darnold. They faced Penn State in, I think, the 2016 Epic Rose Bowl with Saquon Barkley. And then. They faced Ohio State in an absolute dud, I think, Cotton Bowl, where Ohio State won 24-7. Penn State at number 9. Miami. Yes, I remember Miami. Miami was literally the weakest number 2. I remember Miami being ranked number 2 in the nation. They played in 20-degree weather at Heinz Field against a horrible Pittsburgh team. 20 people were there, and they lost to Pittsburgh. Uh, and that bumps them down. Washington at number 11, and then UCF. Multiple appearances for UCF and Washington. They're at number 12. Moving back to 2016, we have Alabama, the number one overall seed. Clemson at number two. How about Washington, a rare Pac-12 team? Yes, they get a bye. That that was the year with, um, uh, who was that speedster? The, the kid that was a bust in the NFL. I forget his name. Uh, but he would, John Ross, John Ross, right. Um, and then Penn State at number four. And then the rest of the field, obviously, in reality, Ohio State did make it over Penn State, even losing to them because Ohio State had one loss. They would be number five. Michigan coming in at number six. They played in that epic 2v3 game uh, where Ohio, with the whole JT Barrett spot and everything like that. Oklahoma at number seven. Lincoln Riley, coach team. Uh, back in 2016, I think that was still, yeah, that had to have been a Baker year. Wisconsin at number eight. So once again, we're seeing a team like Wisconsin have multiple chances at the title. In reality, they've had zero chances at it. Uh, you know, this is like with the expansion playoff, it gives teams more of a chance. USC, Col- Colorado at number 10, Philip Lindsay, Philip Lindsay, yes. Florida State at number 11. So we, we've seen Florida State. This is when they were kind of trending downward. And then Western Michigan out of the MAC. They would have faced Ohio State in a 5v12 matchup in Columbus. That is hilarious, man. Come on, that's awesome. Uh, going back to 2015, you have Clemson as the number one overall seed. Alabama at number two. Michigan State coming in at three. Oklahoma at four. I believe that was the exact same top four because you remember that was the year where Clemson faced Oklahoma in Miami and Clemson with Deshaun Watson easily beat Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma and then Alabama shut out Michigan State. I think 38 to nothing was the final in Dallas uh, at Jerry World and then the rest of the field you have Iowa at number five. You remember that really low scoring Big Ten Championship game they played against Michigan State where Michigan State scored that touchdown really late on like fourth and goal or fourth and one. Stanford at number six, that was a Christian McCaffrey team, I think. Ohio State at number seven. Notre Dame at number eight. 
Florida State coming in at number nine. You can kind of see their downward trend as we go backwards. It's kind of funny. Uh, North, But now Florida State's trending back up. I, mean, I actually really like Florida State, guys. I'm not even dissing Florida State. I like where that program's going. North Carolina gets a shout out. They would be playing for a spot this year if we would have had the 12-team playoff in the ACC championship game against Clemson. TCU, so it comes full circle with TCU. And then Houston, the group of five representative in 2015. Going back to 2014, you have Alabama at number one, Oregon at number two, Florida State at number three, Ohio State at number four. That is the exact order the top four were in originally. Baylor coming in at number five, TCU at number six. Of course, the argument there between Ohio State and TCU at the end of the season. Mississippi State, we remember the first ever committee rankings they released in midseason 2014. Dak Prescott and Mississippi State were the number one overall ranked team. I do remember that. Michigan State, Mark D'Antonio coach team at number eight. Ole Miss coming in at number nine. Uh, that might have been Bo Wallace, if I remember correctly. A little throwback there. Arizona at number 10, Kansas State, Colin Klein, no, no, I think he was out, I, I don't think Colin Klein was there at that point, uh, Boise State at number 12, so it is interesting that we, we think Boise State's this great group of five team, but 2014 would have been the only time they would have actually made the 12 team playoffs, so I also find that very interesting, um, but that's really cool to look back on, and then the, um, Athletic had something that was really cool. So this is 66 schools would have made at least one playoff appearance since 1998. So you can see all the top schools if you add all the criteria and all the factors together. Since 1998, Ohio State makes 18. Oklahoma makes 16. Alabama's at 13. Florida at 12, Georgia at 11, LSU at 11, a lot of SEC there, Florida State at 10, Oregon at 10, Notre Dame with 9, USC with 9, Boise State 8, Kansas State with 8, TCU, kind of surprised TCU shows up that much, good for them, TCU shows up the same amount as Wisconsin, uh, they had a really good run there towards the end of like 2010, uh, so, uh, and then Clemson with seven, it pretty much all of theirs are, you know, late, late, uh, 2010s and things like that. Uh, Michigan with seven, which I'm sure surprises some people, but they were really down, uh, you know, with the coaches, Brady Hoke, Rich Rod, and then Penn State also with seven, kind of surprised that Michigan and Penn State are tied. Uh, and then Texas with seven, most of theirs coming in the early 2000s. And then these were the 11 current Power 5 schools who would not have earned a playoff bid. This is since 1998. So Boston College, that doesn't surprise me. Duke, that doesn't surprise me. Kentucky, that really doesn't surprise me. I mean, they've had decent runs recently. I think their best, at least Kentucky's best season I can remember, is when they beat Penn State in the Citrus Bowl. Was that in 2018? I'm guessing it was. Uh, Minnesota, that really doesn't surprise me either. Uh, remember Minnesota, they, they started their pinnacle with P.J. Fleck. They beat Penn State at home with Rashard Bateman, I think, and Tanner Morgan. Of course, Tanner Morgan is still there. That was like three years ago. NC State, their closest was last year in 2021 when they were ranked 18th. Northwestern, so Northwestern's made, due to the Big Ten West being so weak, they've made a few Big Ten championships, but they've never been close in terms of actually, well, I guess they were ranked 13th, so they were right on the border. They, they were right on the border. Purdue also, Rutgers, Syracuse, Vanderbilt, and, and Vanderbilt's apparently never been ranked at the end of the season. So that's why it says no data and then Wake Forest, that does not surprise me at all. So guys, that is just a little fun throwback to kind of get us in the swing of things. Of course, we don't want to get overzealous. It's going to be really sad next year when we're still dealing with the four-team playoff, and it's very hard to kind of you know rationalize that and understand that. Obviously, it takes time to put a system into place but it is kind of a thing where we're all ready for the 12-team playoff. We're all ready to start recalibrating our game, our brains um, and really start focusing on a team. You know, you get more chances. That's the goal. More teams are, are in it. More games are meaningful. Every New Year's six games matter. This culture of all these top 
first round picks, top NFL draft prospects sitting out, all of that gets nipped in the butt with an expanded playoff. Obviously, if a team's not inside the top 12, um, you know, then the kid will probably sit out. But like, you're looking at Alabama, Bryce Young's not going to be playing. That would be totally different. Alabama would be in the 12-team playoff this year. Ohio State, if they don't make it, C.J. Stroud's not going to be playing. Uh, Paris Johnson Jr. is not going to be playing. They would obviously be playing if it was a 12-team playoff. So that's what we're really trying to get rid of. We want more meaningful games. I said this should happen ASAP back in the summer, and I said it was going to happen by 2024 because the profit in Mar- the overall incentive they would make about half a billion dollars more. Again, this was all said in the summer by me. So I knew this was coming, and it was just a formality, and we have it confirmed. So we need to start recalibrating our brains and really understanding that if a team loses a game, their season is not over. It's not like that in any other sport, and it's not going to be like that in college football. And then people say, well, that's what makes college football special. No, I mean, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, it's still going to matter. It's still going to mean something. But it's just in terms of determining the best team, um, you know, the system that we currently have where if you lose one game, you have no chance to come back and prove yourself. I I think that's completely ridiculous, and that's not how really any other sport does it. And and also, it makes most of these games that are supposed to be New Year Six games, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, Ohio State doesn't even want to go to the Rose Bowl because the fans don't care. Because it's a meaningless game. It's not a playoff game. So that's the kind of stuff we're trying to eliminate. And guys, this was just a little alternative, you know, fun video to kind of look back at the teams that would have made the 12-team playoff. Uh, But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, The Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.